If you've ever wondered when the Secret Service began protecting the president full time, this is the episode for you. On today's podcast, we're going to look at the assassination of William McKinley in 1901. Join me as we talk about that fateful day. Big voice guy, you know what to do. This is the History Podcast. Now, here's your host, Jason Thomason. To truly understand the impact of McKinley's assassination, we must first explore his rise to power. Born in 1843 in Niles, Ohio, William McKinley grew up in a humble family and served as a soldier during the American Civil War. He demonstrated leadership and courage on the battlefield, rising to the rank of brevet major by the war's end. After the war, McKinley's trajectory continued upward. He studied law, established a successful legal practice, and, and then eventually entered into politics. His compelling oratory and principled stance on economic issues propelled him to become the 25th governor of the state of Ohio. McKinley's popularity and successful economic policies caught the attention of the Republican Party, leading to his eventual nomination for the presidency in 1896. McKinley assumed office in the midst of geopolitical shifts, most notably the rising tensions between the United States and Spain. The sinking of the USS Maine and Havana Harbor heightened anti-Spanish sentiments, eventually leading to the Spanish-American War in 1898. As a wartime president, McKinley navigated the complexities of leading the nation through war. His leadership during the Spanish-American War bolstered his image. And the decisive victories in the Philippines and in Cuba solidified his popularity amongst the American public. McKinley's administration not only achieved military success, but also set the stage for significant changes in America's global role. As a wartime president, McKinley navigated the complexities of leading the nation through war. And the decisive victories in the Philippines and in Cuba solidified his popularity amongst the American public. McKinley's administration not only achieved military success, but also set the stage for significant changes in America's global role. Fast forward to September 6th, 1901. President McKinley, who had just begun his second term after being reelected in 1900, attended the Pan-American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. This was an event that was showcasing technological advancements and fostering cultural exchange between North and South America. Thousands of enthusiastic visitors gathered at the fairgrounds to catch a glimpse of their beloved president. McKinley's visit was meant to celebrate the nation's progress and unity but would tragically take a drastic turn. The day was warm and sunny as President McKinley stood in the Temple of Music, a grand and opulent building at the Pan American Exposition. Amidst the buzzing crowd, his security detail had been reduced due to his approachability, a decision that would prove fatal. Leon Chogos, a self-proclaimed anarchist with the intent to make a political statement, approached McKinley, concealing a handgun in what looked like a cast. The president extended his hand, believing Chogos intended to greet him, but instead fired two shots into McKinley's abdomen. The shockwaves of the gunshots reverberated through the hall, and chaos and screaming ensued. His security detail and bystanders wrestled Chogos to the ground, preventing further harm. Meanwhile, President McKinley, wounded and disoriented, was rushed to the exposition's emergency hospital. The nation eagerly 
celebrating progress and unity was suddenly plunged into a state of shock and uncertainty. The air of optimism that filled the exposition grounds gave way to the somber realization that the leader of the nation had just been struck down. McKinley's condition, initially hopeful, took a turn for the worse as infection set in. You see a common theme here? The medical team, equipped with the best available knowledge of the time, struggled to save the president's life. News of McKinley's critical condition spread rapidly, and the nation anxiously awaited updates on his health. Meanwhile, the authorities swiftly dealt with Chogos, whose motivations became clearer in the aftermath. Investigations revealed his deep-seated anarchist beliefs and a desire to strike a blow against what he perceived as oppressive institutions. And in his mind, what better way to do that than to strike the symbol of that institution? As the public grappled with the shock of the assassination attempt, the wills of justice began to turn. In the events following the attack, the, the president was eventually moved to a hospital while Chogos was apprehended by the crowd. Despite receiving medical attention, McKinley's injuries proved to be fatal, and on September 14, 1901, President William McKinley died. The nation now mourned the loss of yet another leader. This one had steered them through the challenges of the Spanish-American War and a rapidly changing world. McKinley's death also marked a turning point not just in the trajectory of the presidency, but in the changing role of the U.S. Secret Service. As news spread, Expressions of grief and disbelief swept through communities across the country. From bustling urban centers to the quiet rural towns, Americans grappled with the sudden and tragic end of an era. McKinley, who had become a symbol of stability during uncertain times, was gone, leaving a void that resonated far beyond the political landscape. In the wake of McKinley's passing, Vice President Theodore Roosevelt assumed the presidency. Known for his, uh, how do you say, dynamic personality and progressive agenda, Roosevelt would go on to reshape the presidency and the nation itself. McKinley's assassination also prompted a reevaluation of security measures for the president. The Secret Service, which we talked about a few episodes ago, initially established to combat counterfeit currency, expanded its role after this assassination to include the protection of the commander-in-chief. The tragic events at the Pan-American Exposition emphasized the dangers that the leader of a new world power continued to face at home. The trial of Leon Chogos began just eight days after McKinley's death. Despite his initial claim to be acting alone, Investigations revealed Chogos was influenced by anarchist ideologies. Found guilty, he was sentenced to death by electric chair. On October 29, 1901, just under two months after the assassination, Chogos became the first person to be executed at Auburn Prison in New York. <laughs> 